And I think walking steps, it's not too hard, it's quite fun, but it's good for the mind, body and soul. Second thing is, uh, I've been drinking lots of Yakult, weirdly. Um, <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Why is that funny? None of that is healthy, you <laughs> insane bastard. Wow. Hello and welcome to the Abroad in Japan podcast. Probably the best way of learning about life in Japan without actually being in Japan. I'm your host, Chris Broad, and we're joined, as always, by England's top Japan enthusiast, Mr. Pete Dawson himself. Pete, how the devil are you doing? What's going on out there? <laughs> what is going on out there? I don't know. It's out early there. in the morning, just as day's dawning. I think we watch a lot of ports from Pat, Chris. Don't mind admitting, um, I, I, I just I, I, for some reason my YouTube algorithm uh, is absolutely filled with um, kids stuff like uh, the Wiggles and um, Ra Ra the Noisy Lion and also um, I've been watching a bit of Post and Pat and um, th- the there's f- like two sort of versions I've noticed of Post and Pat. There's a TV show about a postman if you're unfamiliar. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I've met him. He's, he's, I've actually met he's him. Pretty in real life. You've not met him. You've not met no, Post I have. Pat, Chris. Stop I met the man. Nonsense. I've met the man that not only wrote Post from Pat, but was the narrator oh, yeah. and did all the voices. Uh, yeah, his name was John Cunliffe. He's dead now, I think. But I met him when I was a kid yeah. up in Yorkshire because he lived next door to our family friend. And it was, and he did That's like crazy. he was the same guy that did Rosie and Jim, another show. He was called like Fizz God uh. or something. And I met him, and he had the biggest beard I've ever seen. And this is <laughs> I think it's money. A really eerily big beard. <laughs> a beard comprised of money and dreams from all yeah. the books and all the TV shows yeah. he managed to sell. But That's I'm, awesome. Postman Pat, the stories were always very threadbare, weren't they? I, I don't really remember what happened in Postman Chris, Pat. He delivered uh, a letter. Chris, I'm not being, I'm not being funny. Uh, loads of things happened in uh, the Postman Pat I watched uh, recently. Um, his <laughs> mate with the moustache, I forget his name, he was um, trying to deliver some sand... Wait, what is Postman Pat? For people that don't know, how would you describe Postman Pat? He's a postman. He's a post person. He's a postman. He delivers. He delivers mail. Uh, there'll be a knock, a ring, letters through your door, and that—that's his <laughs> entire role in this sorry story. Um, That—that's it, 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 part of the song at the start. Postman Pat. Postman Pat. Postman Pat. And his black and white cat. He's got a black and white cat called Jess. Uh, early in the morning, just as day is dawning, he picks up all the packages uh, in his van. Everybody knows his bright red van. Uh, all the people smile when they see to see him. Maybe <laughs> you can never be sure. There'll be a knock, ring, letters through your door. Uh, there'll be a knock, ring, letters through your door. I used to think it was there'll be a knock, ring, letters through your door like let us through your door <laughs> like the <possible laughs> powers to be through your door chilling absolutely chilling big fan of that one as a kid but um the episode i just watched was um uh, a man his friend i forget his name he's got some sand something goes wrong with his truck all the sand falls off his truck at the same time a family are trying to uh enjoy the beach they, they, they want to enjoy the beach but they can't get to the beach because there's miles away they really want to go to the beach and you can see how these two situations could wonderfully sort of mash together uh, they end up enjoying the beach in the middle of Gle- Greendale, so uh, it's it's all good. So, wow. oh yeah, and then a gecko goes missing. Um, somebody wow. somebody was getting some a gecko delivered, um, which is uh, and then they <laughs> went missing. Um, uh, so I love geckos. I love Possum Pat. I love everything about the man. Uh, and I used to have a um, when I was a kid. I used to have a Possum Pat. He's got a very big, long nose, Possum Pat. Mm, and uh, does. for some fucking reason, the 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 toy Possum Pat I had. Um, it, I'd sort of chewed off its nose. Oh my and, god! And it just had a big metal spike. Where the nose oh. was. It was so unnecessarily spiky and pointy. Ah, uh, the eighties. <laughs> Jeez, chewing on a postman pat toy. What a weird, such a nose. weird, like mundane sort of story, isn't it? A man who posts letters mm. through a door. And yet somehow they carve a narrative out of it. You've got to take yeah. your hat off to them, yeah. to British Kids TV. Well, they well then, then it, gets, it, it got updated, and some of the ones on YouTube are like new ones, because before you'd have like these weird kind of AI upscaled versions of the original Ugh. Puss and Pats, which, so everything looks a bit greasy and weird. Uh, but the new ones, uh, he's got a helicopter, he's got a mobile phone, he's got an off-road sort of ATV vehicle. It's, uh, it's, it's, uh, I, I realise ATV vehicle is, uh, um, it, it's AT vehicle, isn't it, I suppose? All trained vehicle. People get very upset when you say pin number or pin code. Or, you, know, you know what I mean. You know what I mean, guys. You know what I mean. <laughs> Postman Pat turning up his Range Rover, mm. crashing yeah. over the town face. <laughs> <laughs> God, I mean, I, uh, <laughs> I didn't expect to spend my morning discussing Postman Pat, but no. I, I'm feeling very nostalgic. I'll bite your nose now. off. I'll bite your nose off, Chris. <laughs> <laughs> Why did you do it, Pete? Why? Yeah. I'm worried, though. I uh, I don't know if you've heard Connor post about the other day, but we're doing 
the Cyclothon 3, like the oh. years before, on a bicycle. We did Hokkaido, we did Kyushu, and now we're about to cycle from Yamaguchi to Tokyo. 1,200 kilometers, 14 days. Wow. Fucking kill me. I mean, mm. it's going to be terrifying, and I don't know how I'm going to cycle for two weeks, Pete. How am I going to do it? What will I consume to make this possible? Well, I mean, what I, what I mean, it, well, we know what you'll consume: uh, fried chicken and energy <laughs> gels. But uh, it is true, but, it is true. But uh, and never combine the two on the same plate for crying out loud. Um, I think uh, what is delicious for the people watching uh, the, the 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 cheerleaders on the sidelines uh, is that uh, Christopher will, <laughs> Christopher will indeed uh, be um, reaping what he sowed uh, with uh, Connor um, punishing him for making him a little chilly willy <laughs> boy in the forest uh in, in in a tent and i think it's a i think it's a i think it's going to be beautiful just seeing a, a, a welshman get his get his pay back on on an englishman and i think everyone <laughs> everyone in wales will very much be uh, up for that um so yes I, I cannot wait to see you uh, cycling away but those twin pistons have, have have been doing a lot of work what i like about you know youtube's probably seen as being this quite unhealthy pastime you know mm. with all of the pitfalls that a sedentary lifestyle has um but it seems that like you hanging out with other youtubers you snowboard more you you go <laughs> off trail more you bike more so I, I, look it's it's all good True. it's 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 been excellent for you really it has i suppose it's been a positive influence i hate to admit that doing these things mm. is good like i've learned that the videos are, I'm sort of the most happy to release are usually the tightly scripted videos sat here right. talking about something being comedic or whatever, you know, being thick mm. and fast with stuff. But the videos and then you get you the remember, artwork wrong and everyone and nobody watches it. <laughs> and nobody <laughs> watches it. I kind of had that problem with a recent video actually that came out ten days ago. The video right. tanked. It was the worst performing video. Change the thumbnail. Now it's doing extremely well. And right. you've got to really care about the thumbnail. But um Yeah, those videos do well, but like the ones that you remember and the stuff you, you learn like the older you get that the most important thing is just like memories having good memories of stuff mm. you know and being okay. out there doing stuff on the road cycling relentlessly I'll treasure that hopefully I mean I, famously the second cyclothon last year which kicked off about a year ago um, exactly uh, it didn't go as nicely as we'd have liked because mm. the weather it, the first two three days it was, it was amazing I was having fun we were we were having a laugh and it was good and then the chain on the bike broke and then it rained yeah. harder than anything ever uh, for like mm. three days and we were just cycling relentlessly through this rain the weather was awful and we were just both quite depressed and uh, I famously just listened to my Stalin audiobook to get through it just sit and listen to Stalin. <laughs> um, and Hello, I'm Jesus Stalin, and here is Harry Potter. And the <laughs> well, it wasn't <laughs> written by Stalin. It wasn't like Stalin's <laughs> fucking first person. I, I was kind of like, I, I need to listen to something horrible. So I was like, let's listen to cool. what, what Stalin what did. Yeah. And it, it, was the, it was like young Stalin, where he's had like this... He had a really weird life, but he, he ended up in like a gulag. I remember young, I remember young Stalin. That, that, that was a big book in uh, when I was doing my history at A-Level. That's a cracker. Um, that, was, that, was a, that was an absolute banger of a book, that. I've got it on my uh, shelf, and he, uh, he's, he was a handsome man back in the day. Handsome man. He was a handsome man. He's from Georgia. Handsome and monster. Uh, then he turned into like a mafia boss, and then he got like arrested and thrown in like a Siberian prison for like 10 years or mm. something. And uh, yeah, I was listening to that while I was cycling, and I was like, Stalin killed all his friends when he got to power and like i was mm. cycling past the the car with pete ian paul sitting in it driving along and my right. pe first periodically against the wall. you lot first against the wall <laughs> this is my well, siberian prison periodically the, the the phone would connect to the car via bluetooth so i'd cycle past <laughs> and they're having fun in the car and then the speaker would be like stalin killed all his favorite people <laughs> in a shooting <laughs> up against a wall <laughs> like they were like, what the fuck is this? And it was just, <laughs> but it became a bit of a joke. Um, but this time, I promise not to listen to a Stalin audio tape. I will listen mm. to something far happier. Mm. Uh, the, the speeches of Winston Churchill, from, from Stalin to a bit of Dua Lipa. <laughs> the thing is, <laughs> the thing is that when you're on a bike for two weeks, you know it does get a bit boring, and you mm. do need to listen to something. You need to do something. So yeah. I need to find an audio book that's doesn't get in the way of the experience. Um, right. Or, and hopefully the weather's in our favour. But yeah, it's going to be big. 
there are guests coming on it we've got like Garnt uh, from Trash Days good old Garnt's coming mm. Pete American Pete got yes. PewDiePie Felix is, is joining for a few days mm. there's uh, Natsuki might be joining for a day as well God forbid Natsuki mm. cycling for a, on a bike for a day I can't believe it's <laughs> going to happen for a minute given the last <laughs> the first time I saw him on a bike he cycled for an hour when he was supposed to join me for like a seven hour cycle and he mm. gave up because he said he hurt his backside he's like I can't sit down too painful you you go <laughs> and he made me cycle alone so right. can't wait to see hey, well, what he does on this one is, uh, is, 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 is big boy um, grown up uh, Ian going to be on, on Ian must spend most of his time just inflating tyres on things <laughs> trucks <laughs> bikes that puncture he does, repair that he kits does. yeah he, I mean he saved my bike yeah. when the, the chain went uh, on the second one he saved the day mm. big time I'm actually, we're going to release the video, finally, of the second cycle, like this week or next week. I think next week. Oh, cool. Only a year. It only took a year to put it out. Um, combination <laughs> of my fault and the editor being really busy, Paul. Um, but mostly my fault. And, uh, mm. yeah, no, was, so I watched that over and it was kind of cool to relive the magic from the second cycle. Mm. And you can see the tipping point halfway where we all just hate life. The first like, few days are really fun and happy and everyone's having fun. And then, like, it's just the worst weather. It's like Noah's Ark on on the road, and it's just awful. <laughs> but, yeah, so keep an eye. It kicks off April 1st, and it goes to April 14th. So, And that's yeah. my birthday. If I f- get back Aww. in one piece, I can uh, celebrate my birthday. Woohoo. Uh, we've got a story this week from Saku, who says, Ooh. Hello, Chris Pete. I wanted to share with you a story uh, my friend and I will never forget. I am a new ALT on the jet program placed in Tokushima on the island of Shikoku. Tokushima, lovely place, famously mm. very much nothing to do. My first friend I made on the jet program. <laughs> he ended up there and he left after one year. But I like uh. it. Uh, when my friend from America came to visit me this past winter, he visited the infamous uh, Kazurabashi Bridge in Ia Valley, which you might have seen, guys, in Wacky Weekend it was the first Wacky Weekend with Connor Mm -hmm. awful terrifying bridge and uh, we were lucky to have the breathtaking view all to ourselves no other tourists in sight afterwards we visited the gift shop and stocked up on treats to snack on as we made our way to Nagoro Scarecrow Village I spot this is like the Scarecrow Village for some context a village is like dying there's like three people Mm. left in a town of hundreds and they have resorted to just making scarecrows that just are, are now the townsfolk. And it's really weird. <laughs> when I went there on Wacky Weekend, we had like really bad weather. Again, rain. What is it with Connor? Why is it always fucking rain? We got to mm. Nagaro Scarecrow Village and like the whole mountain was collapsing from rain and lightning. <laughs> and you've got these scarecrows and it's like a horror film. But I love it. It's not ideal, is it? I mean, it's the it's start of a horror film. <laughs> no. Really, and it's extremely remote in these mountains. Anyway, uh, I spotted mm. a bag of what like of what looked to be individual wrapping pieces of sudachi, uh, flavored hard candy. Since Tokushima is known for its sudachi, and everything I had tried thus far had been excellent, I bought the bag without hesitation. Eager to dig into our snacks, I ripped open the bag of candy. We both popped one into our mouths. Almost here, <laughs> almost instantly, I knew something was terribly wrong. The usual fizzy feeling on my tongue gave way to what can only, only be described as chemically bitter, chalky, and soapy taste. Uh, it became so intense that I had to spit out the remains of the sweet. Shocked, I looked over at my friend, who from their contorted face, I could tell, was suffering the same taste bud surprise. Completely flustered, we spent the next several minutes <laughs> rinsing our mouths out with water, trying to rid ourselves of the terrible taste and texture. When we recovered, we took to Google to shed some light on what we just ingested. Uh, well, no, we discovered it wasn't candy at all, but in fact, Sudachi scented dissolvable bath tablets. No, oh, no. That's a shame. That is a we shame. We tried to erase this traumatic event from our memory, but the taste forever lingers whenever reading Sudachi from now on. While the bag was next to the food at the gift shop, I'll never know. Like, why did they put it there? <laughs> Thank you for all the laughs over the years. All the best, Saku, the assuming idiot. His words, mm. not mine. Oh, dear. That sounds disgusting. Bath tablets. Bar- I, like, I always oh. think of. Do you remember? Um, do you remember the? Um, uh, I think it was like a a, a real ale um, hobgoblin in England. 
Yeah, I remember. And it was, uh, yeah. and and it is, and the advert was like basically scared you, scared you'll taste something lager boy. <laughs> Just always think when someone's eating something strong, scared you'll taste something lager boy. Um, so yeah, well, I, 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 that sounds apps. That sounds like a horrible hand grenade, salty. The thing about like soap is you always like whenever you, there's a delicious. Um, strawberry um flavored or strawberry aromad kind of like shower gel i'm of advanced years you know i'm heading into middle age <laughs> and i still cannot resist just having a little taste and see if it tastes of anything <laughs> it, it tastes of salt it always just tastes of horrible salt so there you go yeah well speaking of salt things were very salty in a classroom in Nagoya, when elementary schools got defrauded of a million yen. And that's how you segue into the news. The news that Pete mm. Dolson will now bestow upon us. What's going on in Japan, Pete? Why did some Nagoya elementary students get caught defrauding classmates out of nearly one million yen, about $7,000? What a weird it's, story. Uh, it's bullying, I'm afraid. Uh, Nagoya elementary students have been defrauding classmates. Um, we talk a lot about how um, a lot of older, the older generation gets scammed by, like... Um, you know, texts and, and, and Facebook messages and stuff <laughs> like that. Uh, but it, it sounds like um, the kids are at it as well. Uh, in a, in an elementary school in Nagoya, over the course of, of about a year, uh, a boy managed to relieve himself of quite a lot of money. A boy in fifth grade was being teased by his classmates, classmates who uh, accused him of being poor. While defending himself, he let it slip that he actually uh, has access to uh, one million yen. In cash saved up in his home, six thousand uh, seven hundred uh, dollars. Uh, money saved up from pocket money and gifts from relatives. Shortly after, classmates began approaching him with things to pocket sell. Pocket money, pocket Just money. Just random. Well, yeah, his, I mean that seems. Who's his family? Seven grand. Fifth grade. I don't know. Do you not get like money with different milestones in your life? I guess when you're a Ben. Uh, while defending himself, he let it slip that he had about one million yen in cash saved up his home. Uh, and shortly after, classmates began basically asking, "Do you want to? Do you want to buy?" this tat that we've got uh, over the course of a year there were eight transactions for items that the boy was told would increase in value over time items such as special custom made solid gold replica medals rare plastic money uh, convinced the boy what? to part with uh, near, near enough um, three three and a half grand so it, it's it's by January of this year the boy had lost pretty much all of his savings what the six thousand dollars realizing so weird. that he, he, he talked to his father about it, basically saying, Dad, I've had a fucking nightmare here. Yeah? Uh, the father then notified the police who launched an investigation. Uh, and it's, it, it, it's sad, uh, really. I mean, there's the element of extortion to this and, and the parents of um, two of the three of the boys who sold the items have apologised and repaid about two grand's worth of, of, of money. Um, so he's, he's still down four grand. Uh, the others have probably fled the country. The children are living high on the lamb, buying sweets and... All kinds of nonsense. It's 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 a sad story. Um, That's awful. I, yeah, it's it's uh, uh, you know when like stories are really depressing. This is like one level above that. I think it's just all a big shame. I'm hoping he'll get his money back though, because that sucks. So he was being bullied of, and accused of being poor. So he went, no, mm. I'm not poor. I've got I've got six grand in it. And then God, they were I'd like love six grand. Chris, can you give me six grand? <laughs> no, Chris, I've got some. Uh, I've got a, oh no, uh, a bo- oh, it's rare uh, bottle. You like pop? A rare <laughs> bottle top from oh. England that have half used to money. be on a Jamaican uh, d- uh, soda. Mmm, uh, Chris, you got a special uh, pen used by Jimi Hendrix, the oh, wow. guitarist. Yeah, he's uh, yeah, it's, with uh, my money. it's a lovely pen. It's been nibbled, you can see, by like Jimi Hendrix's cat. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Pete uh, always chews on his his items that he has for some reason. He he, he leaves <laughs> his mark with his teeth, literally. I'm a very he? nervous man. So you chew the pen, and you, re- a you reveal hair trimmer. Oh my god! By- <laughs> None other than uh, uh, Radovan Karavich, uh, the um, uh, uh, hated leader. Um, yeah, he did that, and you can have it for only fifty grand. <laughs> Six I grand. don't understand. Like, no, like he, you don't have this kind of money just laying around your house, though. Like I when know. I got pocket money, which was like <laughs> a pound as a kid. When I got like the rubbish little amounts of money, five pounds, whatever, mm. as a kid, you, you kind of spent it straight away. You never saved yeah. it up, and you never had a million yen in your like as a fifteen-year-old. Mm. How old was he again? He's uh, elementary, so he's probably like fourteen, fifteen, school. and he's got Fifth like grade. a small. What's that? 
Was, uh, oh God! That's, no, that's, I don't, I don't that's, know. Uh, the fifth princess, I don't have a clue, actually. It's like Wait, eight that's or really something. young. That's really yeah. young. He's like eight or something. Yeah. Oh, Nine. What a shame. But mm. like that's that's why you don't let your kids have like a million yen when they're like not even ten years old. <laughs> Isn't that quite high risk? Like yeah. that's quite risky. I don't know. Yeah. Kids don't, don't know. have the best foresight with these kind of numbers. Like if I if mm. I was eight years old and I had five thousand pounds in my bedroom, I might be mm. like I might be like, Oh, can I buy like a car can I buy like an Xbox or can I just blow it all on rubbish mm. and, what, and I'd have to probably have to go to my fa- my parents first the fact he had access to that kind of money is quite impressive really or a lack of yeah. oversight by his family I'm not sure I'm not sure but at least they got some of the money back I just mm. what a really weird situation honestly mm. so some of the bullying in Japan is is very creative odd. creative but it's a real shame awful stuff but mm. I guess he learned the value of money after this. So he did. And he learned so he'd get he it did. back. He learned he'd get it back. But I, I, there was nothing... The school I worked, there was nothing ever of this calibre that I can recall. There was a kid who got his lunchbox taken quite a lot, and that led to some bad things happening. Mm. Uh, bullying, bullying's a real problem. We've covered that, like, here before. And in the Abroad Japan mm. book, I wrote a whole chapter on it. Like, bullying in Japanese schools is, is pretty bad in the sense yeah. that you've got like a more collectivist mindset in Japan and when you're outside of the group when you're not part of the the, the sort of group it really it's really exacerbated it's on, you know yeah. you know but uh, yeah well wow. tied in Jesus. tied into like a, a very big sort of don't complain kind of culture as well um, which which manifests this sort of thing and yeah it. yeah but I'm glad he got the money back cheeky fucking classmates honestly sneaky mm. bastards they're going to be great con men one day, aren't they? Later on down the road. Uh, we're yeah. back to this moment, guys. With your stories, comments and questions over in the fax machine. Wow. And we're back with the fax machine. What have we got this week from our listeners, Mr. Dolson? Fill us in. We got a message from Nick and Chelmsford. Just up the road from me. Uh, hello, Cromulent Chris and Pegnos Pete. I have just got back from my second Japan trip, <laughs> spending a whole month travelling the north of the country. And needless to say, it was brilliant retracing the footsteps of a Ron Japan non stop north. My question's got nothing to do with that, though. Uh, whilst out there, I had a bit of a revelation <laughs> after a Japanese friend earnestly informed me that I'd gotten fat, that I need to adopt oh, no. a much healthier lifestyle. As Chris has proven that even the temptation of Fami Chiki on every street corner can be resisted, I want to ask a bit of advice. What would you two? recommend as a sensible lifestyle change to help me shed the pounds hoping you're both well nick in chelmsford any uh dieting tips chris yeah you to shift anywhere yeah put put your camera at a higher angle and you'll look thinner <laughs> always put the camera at an elevated angle it looks good for the jawline yeah. done yeah that's all the Just tips get you so need. busy you, you don't have time to drink beer anymore <laughs> Which or is eat. certainly yeah. certainly how I managed to shift a fucking stone before Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, and anxiety. S- and anxiety. Oh, yeah. People yeah. keep saying I've lost weight, and I don't. again, mm. I don't know how this has it's happened. It's your cool shirt arms. It's your arm it's, it's, shirt. Yeah, it's have, a, have a tight shirt that makes your arm yeah. muscles look good, but make sure it's like <laughs> spacious around the waist. Um, mm. I think the one thing I've done, I've been trying to work it out. Two things I've done. Number one, right. I try and walk about 10,000 steps every day. Uh, mm. And that does help. Like, listen to something. Listen to your favourite Stalin audiobook. Yeah. Walking around. <laughs> Just uh, famous dictators, yeah. Kids. Or, or the Abroad Japan <laughs> audiobook. A bit more, a bit more yeah. light-hearted listening. But listen to yeah. something, walk around, and I think walking steps, it's not too hard, it's quite fun, but it's good for the mind, body, and soul. Second thing is... Uh, I've been drinking lots of Yakult, weirdly. Um <laughs> Yeah. Why is that funny? None no, of that is healthy, you <laughs> insane bastard. Yakult, Pete. Yakult. Yakult. Why is it not healthy? It's just sugar and fucking no. yogurt, mate. What's wrong no. with you? You cannot put down any kind of health to Yakult. <laughs> <laughs> I could have had a hundred guesses and wouldn't have, wouldn't have thought what you would say there. <laughs> no, but, no, 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 no. It. Listen, though. Like, it's not the normal <laughs> Yakult. About a year ago, oh. Yakult brought out Y1000. And it has like Why 20 1, billion. The usual Yakult's got like 2 million or 2 billion strains of this bacteria. This one's got like 20 billion. Yeah. And oh, they claim it actually many. does something rather than the old one, which is just, yeah, like sugar water. I don't know. I have it. I know Connor takes this stuff. And mm. 
I don't know. I think it must have some effect on your gut bacteria. They say, like, it doesn't get through, that it's all killed in your stomach acid. But I think when you've got 20 billion, there's a good chance <laughs> some of it gets yeah. through. I don't know. The D Day of Yakult, um, uh, l- l- little fellas in your stomach. Uh, that's right. Yeah, I mean, um, that's a, a, quite a big surprise. That um, bearing in mind that you know, obviously, dairy's not a big thing uh, out there, or certainly wasn't historically. Um, hmm. The flavour of Yakult, like you know, um, is quite big out there. There's a lot of drinks that taste like Yakult, and there's a lot of like, yeah. um, there's even like liqueurs and stuff that taste a bit like Yakult as well. Like, like Calpis, right? Big fan Calpis. of that. Calpis is a big, is a, yeah. is a big vibe. Um, if you wanted, if you've ever had a big fantasy that you want to drink a big Yakult, have a Calpis. It's delicious. Oh. There's Calpis flavoured, um, uh, the ice cream that I like, uh, there's, uh, I, I'm obviously part of the Team Coolish uh, generation very much enjoy uh, that, which is just basically a foil packet of of ice cream uh, with a tube coming out of it, like a Capri Sun. And uh, yeah, I mean that. So, so what's that? It's like a long Yakult with more yes. bits in it. For those of you watching YouTube, it, it's you bigger can than see a Yakult, it. Chris. That's how they fitted fitted it in. <laughs> fitted. It is bigger than a Yakult. Yeah, I'm holding it on video now for those of you listening mm. in your cars. Stop the vehicle side the road. Switch to YouTube. <laughs> um, yeah. yeah, it's called Yakult Y1000. It says on the side like. It's good for stress and sleep. And the, sh- mm. the strain of bacteria is called the Shirota strain, which was like found mm. by the, the founder of Yakult back in like the nineteen mid-1900s. Um, right. Yeah. I mean, I, I think it's done something. I don't know. I don't know. I, I've mm. always had like, my, my stomach's been rubbish for years, probably because mm. I ate so much family mart chicken. And mm. it seems to have been better since having this stuff. I don't know. I think it does something. I don't know. Mm. If you take it, let me know. But I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna drink it every day for like a few months and see what happens. What's the worst that can yeah. happen? I suppose there is a, there is a lot of sugar it. in it though. There's no doubt about I, that. I, I, I find it very hard to sort of. I don't. I never do running and stuff. But I, I play a bit of football. I got like. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you know your shit at football when um, the rest of the team played 90 minutes 11 aside right. Uh, at right back at the weekend and uh, you know you're bad um, at football when someone uh, on the uh, they're looking for man of the match right and I mm. and I, I had a pretty good game you know it rarely yeah, happens yeah. but you know you're bad at football when um, somebody says I'm not going to lie Pete was really good today <laughs> <laughs> why did you have to add I'm not going to lie <laughs> why does that sound Unbelievable to you, so yeah, it was. Uh, so, so you know you're bad at football, but yeah, I, I play a bit of football here and there. But I just can't. I just want to do something that I that I can. I just running, man. Like running's the probably going to be the best thing for me. Walk, but I just walk ten thousand yeah. steps a day. Walk, walk. Ten thousand well, steps. I've got a couple of dogs, so yeah. Mm. Get those steps know. done, and I promise you, mm. you'll be as handsome as I am, and so brilliant, mm. and with muscular arms. Do those ten thousand steps. And drink all the alcohol 1,000. we got a question here from Rob, who says, Good day, my dear gentlemen. Having been back in the UK for nearly two years now after living in Spain for 15, I think I'm finally settling down again into some semblance of a routine, and this includes the obligatory weekends away and day trips around the UK. Recently, we went to Scarborough for the first time uh, for the day and had a lovely time as it was sunny. That got me thinking... Are there smaller seaside town resorts built around domestic tourism in Japan? Towns or cities that can offer that can offer seafront arcades and amusement. Uh, basically, mm. is there a Japanese equivalent to Whitby or Skegness? Hugs and kisses <laughs> from Rob. I. That's a good question. Like mm. Japan, seaside towns in Japan are very different. Uh, I feel like we do Many fishing it towns, better. aren't they? Like they're, you're either a fishing yeah. town or you're a, like yeah. Hmm. They just the people don't really splash around in the sea much in Japan. I think because they're just afraid <laughs> no. of all the big silly jellyfish that are around. Uh, <laughs> there's some nice areas like Enoshima, um, that kind of area. Like Kamakura has a nice beach and whatnot, but they don't really do seafronts like we do in the UK. Like we do it better. No, it was the one thing we get. We get better we than do Japan. It better. You know, you go down yeah. Brighton. It's quite a cool vibe. Um, Bournemouth or, you know, Whitstable in Kent. Mm. Like, we do a good job of it. Here, they they, they don't. And I don't know why. Time to no. bring some coin, we, some, some coin amusement arcades. Some coin. <laughs> Disappointed we, with we that. We did, um, um, uh, Waka, went down to Wakayama um, a couple yeah, of weeks yeah. down there. And they, they, and they were, they were, they were pretty nice. Um, but again, they, yeah, you're right, they don't, they don't do many of them uh, like that. I mean, um, there's, there's yeah. nice beaches in Japan, don't get me wrong, but unfortunately there's a lot of concrete. Um, they concreted up like 80% of Japan's coastline. Uh, hmm. Like on the surface it's for tsunami protection. 
and whatnot. But on the other surface, it's mainly just government corruption gone wrong. Mm. Um, but mm. uh, uh, yeah, no, it's a shame. It's a shame, but uh, Japan does have a lovely Shirahama, coastline. Shirahama Beach, that's a nice little sort of resorty kind yeah, yeah. of um, town. Uh, it's got nice little facilities and stuff. That, that's that's nice and sleepy and tucked out of the way. So, yeah, you get pick up a car or uh, in Osaka or um, Kyoto and drive down. That's my recommendation, if you can. Absolutely. We've got one last question mm. from Nikki, who says, LA presentable Chris and charismatic... Sorry, presentable Pete and charismatic Chris. I'm a Slovak uh, American... Slovak American, sorry, uh, a Slovak. What is that? Slovak. 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 American. Currently residing in Denmark. Long time podcast listener. I've been able to listen and live vicariously through your lens and microphone for the last few years. I'm very excited to experience Japan for the first time this September. Wonderful, wonderful stuff. I have a question though about hostel culture in Japan. <clears throat> is there a noticeable difference between hostels in Europe versus Japan? I find in Europe it's a bit of a gamble. Uh, mm. And in terms of the culture, the atmosphere, the cleanliness, but is it more standardised in Japan? Should I just stick with capsule hotels? Uh, thank you very much. Wish you a wonderful week. Take care, Nikki. Uh, I did kind of cover this in a video just last week, actually, which is maybe why Nikki's brought this up in the first place. But uh, mm. the hostels in Japan are, are for the most part good, but like always, do your research. You can find some really bad ones. I, I in the most recent video, how expensive is Japan? I I, I found this really cheap hostel that was like a joke price of fifteen dollars mm. for a double bed in your room and then there's no the door lock was broken and it was held <laughs> together with salad tape right <laughs> it's fucking salad tape like masking tape on the door lock to try and keep the door shut and the kitchen looked like it had like just fucking cholera all over it, it was so dirty right. so but there's some really nice hostels particularly in asakusa so in, Consider in, it. Like, in New York, that, that would be £300. <laughs> in New York, that, that experience yeah. would be 300 quid minimum. But, like, yeah, there, there's some good hostels in Asakusa. Just do your homework on mm. booking.com or whatever, and uh, or Hostel World is quite a good one, and check out the reviews. Mm. But I think, generally, they are going to be good. I've stayed a lot yeah. and uh, always had some great experiences. But it's, it's more mm. about who stays there in the room with you, right, and who you end up with more than the hostel itself so uh, yeah. just just yeah. hope you end up in a good dorm that's all I'll say uh, and lo mm. lots of dorms as well you can choose like women only or men only so maybe take that into consideration as well uh, Nikki but have a very good time in Japan mm. keep the stories questions comment, comments coming in to a brought in Japan podcast at gmail.com I'll be back later in the week so Mr. B Mr. B Donaldson Mr. B Donaldson what's going Mr. on B. with Donaldson. me Pete <laughs> That's what happens when the Tully's coffee runs out. But for now, guys, yeah. have yourselves a great few days. We'll see you right back here to do all over again on the Abroad Japan podcast. Yakult in hand. Yakult 1000. 20 billion it's bacteria bottle. cultures. It's like, the, like the, that virgin cork that came out in the 90s with the Ugh. pammy bottle. It's or like a sexy Yakult. Ugh. Disgusting. Get it down, yeah. Right. Drink it. Drink it. <laughs>